Good morning, everybody. Am I coming in loud and clear for you? All right, good. I see some head nods. Welcome to worship service here at the park. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm the lead pastor over at the Stanton First Church of God. It's so good to be here on this beautiful day. It's good to see most of you here today. Some of you are usually watching from home. Some of you are in person, but it's glad that we all could be out here in God's creation, worshiping the Lord to God together as a community, as the body of Christ. Uh, let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer, and we will go ahead and begin uh, our time of worship. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the many blessings you have given us, God. And Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity that even in the fall, even in the cool, crisp weather, Lord, that we can give you honor, glory, and praise by lifting up our voices to give honor to you through singing. And Lord, we just pray that you'll just continue to uh, do a great work in our hearts, a great work in our minds, a great work in our spirit through the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of your Holy Spirit. It's in all these things we pray in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Feel free to stand if you want to as we sing a God of Wonders. <clears throat> Lord of all creation. water, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacles. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Early in the morning. I will celebrate the light When I stumble in the darkness I will call your name by night God of wonders beyond our galaxy You are holy, holy universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven. Lord of heaven and earth, 
Lord of heaven and earth. Dear Heavenly Father God, Lord, we're just so thankful for this day. And Lord, we're just so thankful for creating us, for creating all the beauty that we see in our world, Lord. And God, I just pray that you'll just continue to uh, be with us at this time, continue to move within our community, move within this park, move within our individual lives, Lord. God, we're just so thankful for you and everything you do for us. It's in all these things we pray in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Come thou fount, come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to see thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, songs for songs of loudest praise. Seeds be some melodious sonnet. Sung by flaming tongues above, praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of God's redeeming love. Here I raise my ebony. Hither by thy help I've come And I hope by that good pleasure Safely to arrive at home Jesus sought me when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God He who rescued me from danger interposed his precious blood Great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. From to wonder, Lord, I feel it. From to leave the God I my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. All else I adore your name above all else. Tune my heart to sing your praise. Above all else, I adore your name. Above all else, to my heart, to sing your praise. Above
the loudest praise to the name above every Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we just thank you for the things you do for us, Lord. We thank you for dying on the cross so that we can be free from the bondage of our sin and from our shame, Lord. And God, as we move into this time of prayer, God, Lord, we just lift up the people we've been praying for throughout this month, throughout this year, uh, throughout this week, Lord. God, we just give it all to you, Lord. God, we especially lift up Becky Fitzgerald, Lord, as she's uh, still dealing with a lot of the issues and things that she's dealing with with her health, Lord. God, we just pray in the name of Jesus and through the power of your Holy Spirit that these uh, transfusions that she's been uh, dealing with, that they'll start to give her some relief, that they'll begin to give her healing in the name of Jesus, Lord. Uh, God, we just lift up Virginia Lindner as she uh, is still recovering from a fall that uh, had a broken humerus, Lord. And God, we just pray that you would continue to bring healing for her as she heals up, Lord. We especially pray uh, for her back, Lord, that you just continue to uh, bring healing to that as well, Lord. God, we just also pray for Brenda uh, Simonetti as she's uh, battling cancer right now, God. And Lord, we especially pray for Rocky as you give him strength to be able to to help his wife any way she needs, Lord. Especially we pray for uh, Brenda as she goes through this battle that she doesn't go into this battle with fear, but she goes into uh, this battle with peace, knowing that you are with her and that the God of peace is with her and is right beside her and is, is in the battle with her, Lord. God, we just also pray for, uh, for um, Jessica's friend Dana as he's recovering from a motorcycle accident. Lord, we're so thankful that he's home and he's recuperating. And Lord, we just pray that you just continue to bring healing to him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just also pray for uh, Jessica's sister, Kimberly, and it's just good news that all her test results were positive and there is nothing wrong going on and that she's good, Lord. And God, we thank you for being with her. We thank you for the doctors who are taking care of her and doing the searching and the testing, Lord. And God, we just uh, pray that you just continue to be a blessing upon her, Lord. And God, we especially pray for uh, Joyce Douglas, Lord. God, we pray for her as you continue to move in her life, that you continue to uh, give wisdom and discernment to both her and Jesse as they're uh, uh, managing all the uh, uh, health concerns that there may be, Lord. God, we especially pray in the name of Jesus and through the power of your Holy Spirit that you'll just be able to, to move mountains in their lives, Lord, be able to find answers, be able to provide a healing so that Joyce no longer has to be in pain, Lord. And God, we especially pray for any of the other requests that are on our hearts. I know there's just a lot of people who have a lot of needs. We especially lift up Angie right now. She's still dealing with an outbreak and she doesn't even know what it is. The doctors don't know what's causing the rashes and the swelling up on her body, Lord. But God, we just pray that you'll just bring healing upon her. We pray for healing for everybody who is listening today, Lord. Uh, that anything that's on their hearts and their minds, any paddles that they're dealing with silently, Lord God, we just pray in the name of Jesus that you'll just bring healing upon their life and that your will will be done. It's in all these things we pray in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today's a good day to be in the house of the Lord, because if we think about everywhere we're at, everywhere we are, whether it's in a building or out in nature, we are in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Awesome. Today, I want to talk a little bit about what it means to live a transformed life. What does that even look like, living a transformed life? What does it feel like? How does it, you know, how does 
Is it even possible to live a life that has been completely transformed? You know, a lot of times when we think about our faith and we think about our walk in Christ, a lot of times I see people who give their lives to Christ. Jesus, they know that Jesus is one who forgives them of their sins and they have new life through him. And yet they continue to live life almost like they're living part as a people of the world instead of people of the kingdom of God the type of call that we are called to serve, the type of life we are called to live in God's kingdom. You know, I think about the Apostle Paul as he's writing the the letter to the Hebrews. And the Hebrews were people who knew how to live a holy life based on the old covenant. But there are some transitions, there are some things that they're having a hard time, what it meant to live in this new covenant life with Jesus. And as the Apostle Paul is writing this letter, he concludes with this powerful message in Hebrews 13, 20 through 21. And this is what Paul writes. He writes, May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, I equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to which to whom the glory forever and ever, amen. So the Apostle Paul is essentially summing up the entire letter of Hebrews saying, this is what it means to live a transformed life. These are the things you need to know on how you can live that holy transformative life. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, those two verses in Hebrews and we're gonna break it down into what it means to live a transformed life. So the first sentence we see in Hebrews 13, 20 is may the God of peace. Do you guys know that we serve a God of peace? We serve a God of peace. And when we think about this word peace, my mind goes to Ephesians 6, 15 that talks about the armor of God. And in 615, it says that equipping you with the boots or the shoes to be able to live out God's peace. Now, when we think about armor, helmet, shields, uh, breastplate, swords, when we think about all those things, we are preparing somebody to fight battles. And when we think about fighting battles, the one word I don't associate with fighting battles or going to war is peace. We don't associate peace with war. But one of the things I find so fascinating is what our shoes, what our boots, we put them on our feet so that we can go walking, that we can follow a path. And when I think about battle battalions, you know, there's always the army that are walking in battalions, but they're usually following their captain. They're following the leader as they're going into battle. So when we realize and when we understand that we serve a God of peace and that we are following in step with the God of peace, we can have peace. We can live a life without fear, but a life of peace if we are following him. See, the thing is, is God is for us. God doesn't work against us. He doesn't work against his people, but he works for us when we are following him. And a lot of times when I look at Christianity, when I look at our culture today, a lot of times I see people who call themselves Christians living lives of fear than lives of peace. We need to live lives of peace because when we think about where do we have our peace? Well, we have our peace through God's mercy. We have peace through God's grace, we have peace knowing that Christ has forgiven us. If we look at Romans eleven thirty through 36, we see how graces, God's mercy leads us to repentance. It says, just as you were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience. So they too now have now become disobedient in order that they too may receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. 
For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and how and in his past beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. When I look at Paul writing to the Romans and talking about the disobedience that leads to God's mercy and forgiveness, it reminds me of the book of Nehemiah. When we get to Nehemiah 8, we see that everything, the walls of the city have been built, everything has been built up, and Ezra is reading the law to the Israelites. And as Ezra is reading the law to the Israelites, the Israelites are mourning, they're crying because they're ashamed of all the sin that they have committed. They're ashamed that for so long, for generations after generations, they were not living like holy people. They were living as sinners. In Nehemiah, as people are crying, he tells people to go. This is not a time of mourning, but a time of rejoicing. And then later on in Nehemiah 9, 16 through 19, Nehemiah reads this. He says, but they, our forefathers, became arrogant and stiff-necked. It did not obey your commands. They refused to listen and failed to remember the miracles you performed among them. They became stiff-necked and in their rebellion appointed a leader in order to return to their slavery. But you are a forgiving God, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Therefore, you did not desert them, even when they cast for themselves an image of a calf and said, this is your God who brought you up out of Egypt or when they committed awful blasphemies. Because of your great compassion, you did not abandon them in the desert. By day, the pillar of cloud did not cease to guide them on their path, nor the pillar of fire by night to shine on the way they were to take. So when we think about the mercy of God, the peace of God, we also have to associate the graciousness of God. We serve a God that is gracious. And because we have a God of peace, a gracious God, a God of mercy, that we as ambassadors of Christ, we as who call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ, we too need to live out God's mercy and grace. We need to live a life of peace, not a life of fear, not a life of dread. When we really think about the turmoil we may be in or the situations we can find ourselves in, or maybe some of us may be in those turmoilous situations right now. We can take stock in understanding that we serve a God of peace, that we are a blessed people because we have such a loving, merciful, gracious God. And because we're blessed by this God, we should live like it. The next part we see is the Apostle Paul writes, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, when we think about Jesus Christ and the way Paul's writing it to the Hebrews, Jesus is that eternal cleansing. Jesus became that sheep, that sacrificial lamb, that scapegoat that was sacrificed to be the once and for all to to forgive us of our sins. In Hebrews 9.14, it says, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. When we realize that Jesus has cleansed us from all sin, from all righteousness, and we begin to live like it, we then begin to live a life that has a clear conscience a life that is pure, a life that is holy, a life that trans, is transformative, that we no longer have to be guilty, continue to be oppressive or a slave to our sins, to our shames, even to our negative thoughts that come in our heads or maybe come out of our mouths, but that the God, Lord cleans that. And when he cleans it, it is once and for all. In Colossians 2, 6, 10, it says, so then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him. I think that's important going back to serving a God of peace. Continue to follow in the footsteps of God. Continue to live in Christ Jesus. 
rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been giving fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. When we proclaim that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, when we ask him to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us from unrighteousness, and last week when we talked about the topic of holiness, we talked about the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit sanctifies us, it cleanses us so that we can live a holy life. And when we're always in step with the Savior, when we're always clinging on, when we're always allowing the Holy Spirit to do a transformative work in us, that's how we can continue to live a holy lifestyle. That's when the Holy Spirit can continue to do a great work in our lives. But not only that, we can find that comfort and peace in God and in Christ Jesus. Again, going back to Hebrews, we see the great shepherd of the sheep. You know, there's a lot of words that people use to describe Jesus, to describe God. Um, you know, Alpha and Omega, Son of God, Messiah, Savior. But I think one of the most tender, caring things descriptions of God is shepherd or the good shepherd. When we look in John's gospel in John chapter 10, uh, throughout John chapter 10, we see these verses. We see, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. You see, Jesus went to the extent of his pure love by laying down his life for us. The shepherd cares about each and every one of, one of us so much that no matter what we've done, no matter our history, no matter our past, that Christ will continue to lay down his life for us, for he is the good shepherd. Even when we look at the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want anything. Think about that. Just that first verse, how powerful that is. When the Lord is our shepherd, we don't need anything that this world offers to us. We have our hope. We have our security. We have our identity. We have that the goodness that, over, that flows from the heavens comes from the good shepherd. It comes from the grace of God. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me on the path for righteousness for his name's sake. Think about that, restoring our souls. How many of us are spirits that are, are at unrest right now? Maybe we feel some unrest in our lives, maybe in our minds. And here we see a promise that when we Go to the shepherd because we know if we call ourselves followers of God, not only do we know the shepherd's voice and we will follow him, but the shepherd also knows his sheep. So there's a comfort in that. There's a healing in that. There's a transformation in that. And then finally, we see these passages equipped you with every good for doing his will. Here's the thing about following Jesus and living a transformed life, that God equips us to do his will. God equips us to do his will. What that means is that inside our lives, we have the tools that we need to use to do the will of God. It's already inside of us to do. And that they are in you, which here's the powerful thing. You know, we sing the song, God of Wonders, and we talk about the wonder of God, the wonder of his creation. And if God has given us the tools to do good work according to his will, that also means that there is wonder inside of you to do great things for God, to do great things in the name of Jesus Christ. Did you know that? Did you know that there is wonder inside of you to do the good things for the Lord. 
And then to, to kind of close out the rest of Hebrews verse, and may he work in us what's pleasing to him through Jesus Christ. So here we see that God is also at work in us. It's not just once I give my life to Christ, God does the work and then he's done. But no, God continues to do that continual work in us. We see a lot of imagery in the Bible from a silversmith refining silver and fire. We see the image of a potter molding clay and molding it and molding it until it fits God's image. And that's one of the things we see that God is working in us. In Philippians 4, 6, 9, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace. Again, there's that God of peace. The God of peace will be with you. Even in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 through 24, it says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. And here's the thing when we talk about these two ideas. We see that God has equipped us for good works, and God is doing a work in our lives. So when we think about these two Ideas. Sometimes we like to think, well, God's working through me as I'm kind of doing all this work. And then there's other people say, well, God's going to have to work with me first before I can do work, God's work. But the way this works and the way I believe scripture tells us is it's simultaneous. As I am, as I'm allowing God transforming me and working in me, then I'm also working and doing God's will through my hands, through my feet. And as I'm helping people, as I'm being the light in Christ, going and proclaiming the good news, doing the good work that he has called me to do, as I'm doing all those things, he is continually doing work in my heart, work in my spirit, continuing to remove the things that may be impure that need to go to the wayside. And the reason why he's doing this, because as God is working in me, as I'm continuing to work and do the will of God, we see that the transformation that's happening is so that we can be the image of Christ. That the fullness of Jesus Christ can be through us, through me, through you. So as we think about what it is, what is a life that is being transformed, essentially it's three things. Connect to God. Always follow in step with the God of peace. Not only live it, but also understand that you are redeemed. You are forgiven. And that in the name of Jesus Christ, you have grace, you have mercy, you have peace, and you have his love that continues to pour into you. It's a gift that he continues to give. And as I remember that, and as I apply that truth to my life, and I'm living it out, not only am I doing the good work he has called me to do, doing the wonders of God that he, with the tools he had put inside me, but that at the same time as I'm doing these things, God is continually to do a work, a transformative work in my life so that I can be the mere image of his son, Jesus Christ. That is what God calls us to do. That's what God calls us to be, to be ambassadors of his son, Jesus Christ. As we close in prayer, I want you to really think about the things that are going on in your lives right now. I mean, one of the things about 2020 and COVID-19, and even though we have a lot of different avenues and a lot of technology where people can watch at home, people could come in service, uh, people can watch the replay later on, and we have all that capability. The one thing that I think that we all miss is that aspect of community, that aspect of fellowship, of being able to connect with people. 
And I know that it's gonna probably be a while before we'll get to that point where we no longer have to worry about people getting sick to COVID. But at the same time, whether we're together or whether we're together in spirit, in the mind, always allow Jesus Christ to continue to do a powerful work in your lives so that you can do powerful work in the lives of others. And if there's anybody here who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, if there's someone who really needs to be anointed or really needs to, feels like you need some transformation to happen within your mind, within your heart, then you know, feel free to come down here. We will pray with you. Uh, we will anoint you. At least I will. I'll have my mask on to make sure that everything is okay. And we'll just kind of make that private according to all the guidelines. But don't leave here today going back to a life that you are currently living, but leave here today as a life transformed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we just thank you so much for this day. God, we thank you for the many blessings you have given us. And Lord Jesus Christ, we just come to you today with our hearts, with our minds. And Lord, we just pray that you continue to do a good work in us because you're not done yet. You're not done with me. I know you're not done with anybody who may be listening. I know you have big plans for us, no matter how young or how old we are, no matter how healthy or ill health we are, God, you can continue to do a good work in us because that's something you have promised in your word. That's something that Jesus believed. That's something that the apostles believed, that you continue to work in us as we continue to work in others' lives by proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, as we uh, close out with this last song, Lord God, I just pray that if there's anybody here that needs prayer, that needs some type of something in their lives, transformative healing, whatever the case may be, Lord God, I just pray that before they leave, before they get in their car and go home, that they're able to find a brother or sister, find me, find someone to be able to pray with them, to lift them up before they leave here today so that they can leave a life transformed by your son, Jesus Christ, and through the power of your Holy Spirit. It's in all these things we pray in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we uh, conclude with our final song, just a couple things before we begin. Um, you know, this year has been an interesting year. Uh, I didn't, you know, I'm sure when everyone began with high hopes of this year, I don't think anyone could ever imagine COVID-19 and all the stuff that we've been dealing with whether worldwide or whether we're dealing with the flooding and stuff that has happened in our community here in Stanton. But the one thing I always know and the things I read through the scriptures that even when Israel were in times of trouble, even when they had seasons where things were uncertain and weren't looking up, that they always knew God was in control and that God was with them, that God was watching them and that God's hand was upon them. So as we sing this final song, let us make it also our prayer that even no matter what's happening in our world today, that God is watching over us, that God has big plans for our community, for Stanton, for our church, and for the world. Please join us as we sing God of the City. There is 
no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. You're the Lord of creation, the creator of all things. You're the king above all kings. You are. You're the strength in our weakness. You're the love in the brokenness. You're the joy in the sadness. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done here. to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done. We believe, we believe in you, God. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this day, and we know that you are the God of this city. And Lord God, right now, I just pray in the name of Jesus that as we leave here today, we leave here as redeemed people, we leave here as transformed people, we leave here as people who are able to invoke the wonders of your spirit, to be able to bring a blessing and good news to everybody we come in contact with. Lord, may you continue to pour out your spirit onto each and every one of us. May your spirit continue to work us and transform us through and through as we continue to be the mere image of your son, Jesus Christ. It's in all these things we pray in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless everybody. Have a great day.